we are counting down the 10 most statistically safe planes you can own for less than $40,000. Not because you are careful, but because these machines were engineered to keep you alive when physics turns hostile. From slow-flying classics that reduce crash forces by design, to metal shells and mechanical solutions that outwit the stall and spin at the root of most fatal accidents, this ranking spotlights aircraft where survival is a function of structure, not luck. Some are famous for their gentle manners, others are nearly unbreakable, and a few use inventions that make it nearly impossible to lose control in the first place. Which one claims the top spot for affordable, unkillable safety? Let's begin, starting with number 10. At number 10 sits the Aronka Chief, a plane that proves the laws of physics are the best insurance a pilot can buy. With a cruise speed of about 85 miles per hour and a stall speed of around 38 miles per hour, the Chief moves through the air at a pace that keeps kinetic energy in check. In a crash, energy is not about luck. It is about velocity squared. Compared to a trainer that cruises at 120 miles per hour, the Chief cuts impact force nearly in half simply by flying slower. That is not just theory. It is the reason so many low-speed incidents in these old fabric wing trainers end with bent metal and bruised pride, not tragedy. For $25,000 to $35,000, you are getting a machine that lands at walking speed and takes off from fields where others fear to taxi. The trade-off is that fabric needs care and you are not going to outrun a thunderstorm. But if your priority is surviving the unexpected, the Chief's gentle flight profile and low mass make it the quiet champion of affordable safety. It is not pretty and it is not fast, but when everything goes wrong, slow is strong. The Beechcraft skipper was born out of a simple question. What if a trainer could make stalls predictable and recovery almost automatic? Beechcraft's answer was geometry. The skipper's T-tail sits high above the slipstream, keeping the elevator clear of turbulent air when the wing approaches a stall. That means you keep elevator authority even as the nose starts to buffet. Under the skin, the wing uses a GAW-1 airfoil. It is directly descended from NASA research into low-speed stability. Pilots get plenty of warning before a stall, and the brake is gentle, not abrupt. Unlike the Cessna 152, the skipper was certified for intentional spins, but its design makes accidental entry rare. The cabin stretches a full 54 inches wide, giving more elbow room than most trainers. Fewer than 800 were built, so finding parts can take patience. The $28,000 to $35,000 price tag puts it squarely in the smart buyer's range. For those who want a docile, forgiving trainer with engineering pedigree, the skipper stands out, spin-resistant by design, not just by marketing. Luscombe's answer to safety was radical for its era. Build the entire fuselage out of stressed aluminum skin, not a hidden frame. Let the outer shell itself carry the load. This is true monocoque construction, where the skin is the structure. There is no steel truss and no wood spars, just riveted aluminum forming a rigid, lightweight tube. At just 780 pounds empty, the Luscombe 8A and 8E stay strong and agile. The skin absorbs shear forces and distributes crash energy across the whole structure. The result is a cabin that resists crushing better than fabric or wood and a fuselage that will not rot or sag after decades in the elements. Maintenance becomes a matter of checking for corrosion, not having to recover fabric or replace stringers. That strength does come with a demand. The Luscombe is famously sensitive on the controls and it requires a steady hand and real attention from the pilot. For $22,000 to $30,000, you get a machine that rewards skill with unmatched structural integrity. An aluminum shell stands between you and disaster, provided you respect its quick reflexes. The Cessna 120 and 140 do more than survive the decades. They demand that pilots master the fundamentals. These are true tail draggers, with the main wheels set forward and the small tail wheel at the back. That configuration means every landing and takeoff teaches discipline. At approach speeds of 55 to 60 miles per hour, the margin for error is slim. You cannot get lazy with your feet or hands. 
the airplane forces you to fly it all the way to the hangar, not just to the runway. That is why pilots who learn on a 120 or 140 tend to walk away from trouble in any airplane they fly later. The skills stick. Structurally, the Cessna 120 and 140 are mostly aluminum, a major leap from the fabric and wood of their predecessors. Corrosion can be managed with regular inspections and there is no fabric to rot in the rain. Over 1,000 of these aircraft are still on the FAA registry, a testament to their durability and to the loyalty of owners who value a machine that is as tough as it is honest. But there is a catch. Tail dragger ground handling is less forgiving than tricycle gear trainers. Ground loops are a real risk if you lose focus, especially in a crosswind. Insurance companies know it, and so do flight instructors. Still, for $28,000 to $35,000, a well-kept Cessna 120 or 140 offers not just affordable flying, but a school of discipline, a plane that makes you a safer pilot for life. Piper's Colt was never meant to win beauty contests. It was built to teach discipline, not to flatter egos. With a wingspan of just 29 feet, a stubby profile, and no flaps, the Colt does not do you any favors on approach. There is no button to bail you out, no drag devices to mask a sloppy glide path. When you chop the power, it sinks, 900 to 1,200 feet per minute, forcing you to fly a precise pattern and nail your speed every time. If you come in high or hot, the Colt will show you the lesson by floating halfway down the runway or dropping in hard. That is not a flaw, that is the lesson. Unlike trainers that coddle you with forgiving gear or automatic systems, the Colt demands accuracy. Pilots who cut their teeth on this airplane walk away with habits that stick for life, stable approaches, controlled descents, and a healthy respect for energy management. The two-seat layout keeps distractions to a minimum, and the steel tube frame shrugs off rough landings. Maintenance is straightforward. No complex flap linkages, no hidden surprises. For $25,000 to $30,000, the Colt is the cheapest Piper you can buy that is built to survive student abuse. It will not make you look glamorous, but it will make you a better, safer pilot. That is why it earns its place on this list, not for comfort or speed, but for the tough love training that pays off when things get real. Piper Tri-Pacer was built for the pilot who did not want to gamble with ground handling or botched turns. Its spring-linked aileron and rudder controls mean that every time you move the yoke, the rudder moves too, about 10 degrees of rudder for every 20 degrees of aileron. This is insurance against the most common beginner mistake, trying to turn without coordinating rudder and aileron. The result is a system that automatically keeps the turn balanced, making uncoordinated stalls a rare event. Where tail draggers demand constant footwork and punish the inattentive with ground loops, the Tri-Pacer's tricycle gear sits wide and stable. The milk stool stance keeps the nose wheel planted, cutting ground loop rates to half those of tail wheel trainers. For students and low-time pilots, that means rough landings are more likely to end with a bounce, not a repair bill. With around 800 Tri-Pacers still flying in the US, parts and support are easy to find. Prices hover between $28,000 and $38,000 for airworthy examples. It will not win beauty pageants, and it cruises slower than the sleek metal trainers. But the Tri-Pacers' mechanical safety net has kept generations of pilots out of trouble. For anyone who values engineering that quietly compensates for human error, this is the steel cage solution that does the thinking for you. Stinson's 108 doesn't just survive bad landings, it was engineered to absorb them. The heart of this plane is a welded 4130 chromoly steel tube fuselage with tubes over one inch thick forming a cage around the cabin. In a crash, the load paths run directly through this steel skeleton, distributing impact forces away from the pilot and passengers. It's the same logic as a racing roll cage, keep the cockpit intact, and let the rest crumple if it has to. NTSB reports on stints and accidents often highlight the way the cabin stays whole, even when the gear folds or the wings shear off. 
survivors walk away from wrecks that would have crushed lighter, riveted shells. But brute strength isn't the only trick here. The 108's wing carries fixed leading edge slots that run nearly one third of its span. When airspeed drops, these slots keep air flowing over the ailerons, so even in a full stall you can still steer. That's a rare safety margin in a tail dragger of this vintage. Pilots who lose track of speed or angle in the pattern aren't left helpless, control authority lingers, buying precious seconds to recover. Prices for Stinson 108s hover between $32,000 and $40,000, depending on condition. The trade-off for all that steel is weight. Expect a heavier feel and a thirstier engine than the competition. Part support isn't as easy as the Cessna crowd, and restoration costs can climb if the cage ever needs repair. But for those who value brute force protection and stall edge control, the Stinson 108 stands as a fortress in the sky, one that asks for respect but gives it back in survivability. Fred Wyke's A Coupe 415C was engineered to make spins a thing of the past. The secret is mechanical. The elevator stops at about 13 degrees of up travel and the ailerons are linked to the rudder through the yoke. There are no separate rudder pedals, so there is no chance to kick the tail out and start a spin. The FAA Type Certificate A 61 states that the Urcoupe is characteristically incapable of spinning. In a normal stall, the nose simply drops and the airplane mushes forward, with full aileron control still available. There is no wing drop, no snap, and no opportunity for the classic spin entry that has claimed so many pilots in other types. This is not just theory. Over three decades, the Akoop fleet has logged fewer than 10 documented spin accidents, a number so low it stands out even among trainers. In a world where stall spin accidents make up a quarter of all fatal general aviation crashes, the Akoop's record is almost an outlier. Insurance companies noticed, flight instructors noticed too, and they sometimes complained that you could not even log spin training in an Akoop because the airplane simply would not do it. For buyers, the value is hard to ignore. Airworthier coupes routinely list between $20,000 and $30,000. Cosmetics may be plain and performance is modest, but the safety is baked into the bones. If your top priority is walking away from a botched maneuver, this is the only certified airplane where the FAA itself says the spin is off the table. That is not marketing. That is engineering. The Moran Saulnier Rally looks like it was built for utility, not applause. Underneath that unassuming skin is a wing that rewrites the rules of slow flight. At about 55 knots, as the angle of attack climbs, a set of full-span leading-edge slats slide forward, completely automatically with no input from the pilot. This is not a gadget for show. The slats transform the airflow, grabbing the air, and holding on when lesser wings would let go. Stall speed drops below 38 knots clean, and the ailerons remain alive even deep into the slow end of the envelope. That is not theory. It is why the rally can land in under 500 feet, then turn around and claw off the ground again before most trainers even reach rotation speed. Spin attempts are met with stubborn resistance. The slats and wide-cord ailerons keep the airflow attached and the controls responsive, making it almost impossible to provoke a true spin. Instructors call it the tin parachute for a reason. When pilots botch the approach, the airplane gives them a second chance instead of a spiral. The rally's gear is built to soak up rough fields, and the French manuals brag about its short takeoff and landing prowess, short takeoffs, shorter landings, and the kind of control that forgives late flare or gusty crosswinds. Yet for all this brilliance, the rally is an outsider in the United States. Parts can take patience, and import quirks keep prices in the $28,000 to $35,000 range. But for buyers who value hardware over hype, the rally is a secret weapon, a machine that uses physics and steel to turn bad decisions into safe arrivals all without asking for heroics from the pilot. Bert Rutan's Varese stands as the final word in aerodynamic safety for pilots who want physics, not luck, on their side. 
The genius of the canard layout is simple but absolute. The small front wing is engineered to reach its maximum lift before the main wing ever gets close. At roughly 12 degrees angle of attack, the canard stalls first, dropping the nose and forcing the airplane to recover airspeed before the main wing can even think about departing controlled flight. This is not a marketing slogan or a theoretical promise, it is a physical guarantee built into the geometry. In full aft stick flight tests, the Varese refuses to enter a deep stall or spin. The main wing keeps flying, the controls stay alive, and the airplane corrects itself before trouble can begin. Spin entry is virtually zero, not just rare. This is the only plane on the list where the main wing is physically incapable of stalling before the nose drops, making classic stall-spin accidents a thing of the past. But this level of safety comes with a new kind of responsibility. Every Varese is a home-built, assembled by individuals following Rutan's plans. That means no two are exactly alike. The quality of the build, the precision of the canard's incidents, even the finish of the composite layups all depend on the builder's skill and discipline. Annual condition inspections are mandatory and buyers must be relentless in checking logbooks, repairs, and modifications. Insurance companies know this too. Policies for experimental aircraft can run higher and underwriters will ask about builder reputation, inspection history, and any changes from the original design. The reward for diligence is a machine that offers a level of passive safety no certified trainer can match. The market knows what it has. Vary Easy's in solid condition trade between $30,000 and $40,000, a price that reflects their cult status among pilots who value engineering above cosmetics. You won't find a factory warranty or a plush interior, but you will find a structure that absorbs energy better than aluminum, a cockpit that resists crushing, and a flight envelope that refuses to punish mistakes with a spiral. For those who want the ultimate expression of passive safety, where the airplane itself makes the right decision before you even realize you've made a wrong one, the Very Ease is the apex predator of affordable, survivable flight. Across all 10 machines, one pattern stands out. True safety is baked into the bones, not bolted on as an afterthought. These aircraft prove that engineering, with steel cages, stall-proof wings, and redundant geometry, trumps cosmetic upgrades and price tags. In aviation, survival is not luck, it's structural intent. The safest cockpit is the one that was overbuilt on purpose. Which engineering legend earns your trust? Let us know below.